What's something your parents told you as a kid that you now realize was entirely not true? So it wasn't me. But my cousin believed something for way too long. My grandparents lived in Commerce City. See when we were kids. They had a wrap around deck and to keep us from going under it. They told us they had a pet alligator living under the porch. Early on Trousseau, when we are all adults we had a family meet up at a spaghetti factory. And while we are all catching up he says in front of everyone what did you guys ever do with your alligator? We all had a great laugh from that one. I was three years younger than him, at much less gullible. My mum used to tell me that I was fat since I was five six years old until I hit my twenties. Looking back at that time I realized that I was clearly not fat, not even overweight. Now she knows she cannot judge or comment my body anymore or give unsolicited advices. Ents ago she was there that she used to call me a pig when I was eating too much. She said she was sorry and didn't realize at that time that it was hurtful and didn't even remember saying that. Parent hey I just got caught for a lie told years ago to my daughter. In an effort to not have a picky eater make less work for myself. I once told her that the crust is the healthiest part of the bread on her sandwich. Ten years later she's fussing at her younger sister for tearing off the crust and I hear the crust is the healthiest part one always eat my crust first. In a slightly superior tone, I died. I had forgotten all about that silly lie. Extra OB. I regret nothing ha ha. As a child I was often told by adults all around that the world is a cruel and horrible place, and no one will help you. I've learned that they were neglected and abused and the world is actually quite helpful and good. But you can't sit and expect the things to fall in your lap. Ask for help and you'll find it typically. There are deaf unfortunate circumstances out there, and I've been in some myself, but to tell a child the world is horrible and cruel requires one to be those things I am o. My brother fully believed for 26 years that my mother's middle name was a ermintrude of magic roundabout fame after a flippant comment my mother made. He found out at the age of 29 and was devastated that mum had lied. My grandmother the one to unwittingly reveal mum only had one middle name that wasn't ermintrude rang later annoying that she wasn't in on the joke otherwise she'd have kept up the facade. That they sent my dog to laugh on a nice farm, where she'd be happy to run around safely with a family that loved her. She'd had no training. My parents had no idea how to care for a dog, and my uncle was a veterinarian. I was well into my twenties before I put all that together. They just put her down sad face. I've tried to make up for it as an adult by adopting orphan and wayward rescue dogs and cats. My dad once told me, you'll find out sooner or later, people sir. Nah. Dad. I've met a bunch of people, and while some of them have sucked, most of them have been pretty awesome. He had a lot of people be really shitty to him throughout his life starting with his own parents and continuing right along. He always said the only people who were ever good to him were me, my mum, and the US Army. My dad told me I wasn't allowed in a particular restaurant because I'd made such a scene as a toddler. We had to leave, he said. Never allowed back. I had imagined my baby face pictured on the wall with do not serve written under it. But how do they know what I look like now? Did they use age progression on the image, maybe? Was it accurate? I believed that nonsense until I was like 18 years old. It's not something they said per se, but something they never corrected me on. I saw a lot of death growing up and went to several funerals. I just always assumed that everyone knew loss and grief from a young age. Until, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine lost her grandpa and I found out it was the first time she experienced grief. Talking to her, I found out it's the case for most people. Mum made me hate Boz so much when she told me at 14 that if any boar touches me I would get pregnant and my life would be ruined. That lie got me so scared I never had close male friends at senior high school even up until I was 22 when I finished college. I laughed at my innocent little self each time I realized that was the only lie she had to tell me to teach me sex education. Poor mama. Grandpa was known for telling fibs. 
he convinced me that cows peed like dogs with one leg up in the air, that my grandma caught squirrels and made them into her soups, and that a ghost named Helen lived in the spare bedroom at the end of the hallway, and she kept bad children chained up in the attic dot dot. Oh, and if a frog pees on you, you'll get a wart. That's it's illegal to drive with the interior lights on, in your car. I'm 35 and any time my husband turns them on in the car, I need to immediately turn it off, cause I think we'll get pulled over. I have no idea why my mum had this ingrained in my head so bad. It wasn't like I was a hyper child turning them on and off or anything. That we'd get my dog back in a year. My dog had bitten the neighbour kid. Way back then, rabies shots were horrific. Plus brain biopsy was how to tell if a dog had rabies. So the dog had to be killed, and my parents lied, saying he'd be back after a year of observation. A year to the day later, I asked where Spot. Ah, that's a fun topic to reflect on how about saying something like, looking back, it's wild to think about all the things my parents told me growing up that turned out to be completely untrue. It's like finding out the truth behind all those childhood mysteries, what do you think? When I told my own kids Happy New Year, it's midnight. Now go to bed. We were on the West Coast watching the ball drop in New York. So it was only 9.0 p.m. They believed it for many years. And my husband and I got to have a grown-up New Year's celebration after they fell asleep. Everyone being told hard work will get the summer is played out. Let's talk about there being someone for everyone. No, there isn't. Or the one for me died before I met them. Same difference. Now, not doing what I want with my life. And I'm alone. I've got the best of nothing. My dad told me that Santa had a werewolf best friend that came to check in every month. At night he would do things like howl outside to make me think there was a real werewolf. I believed him until kids at school were like Santa Claus is not best friends with Wolfman, dummy. That cows that live in the mountains have two legs shorter than the other, so they can stand on hills better. Fucking told everybody at school it was true. Teacher laughed in my face. I was a pretty smart kid. It just made to make sense. Obviously, it's only goats that have that. If I made eye contact with the garbage disposal while it's running, a kitchen utensil would shoot into my eye with the equivalent force of a railgun. Also, if I ran the disposal without the water running, psa bumba, the disposal still haunts my dreams. Everything will work out if you're willing to put in hard work. To be fair, I think their life had gone well before they taught us this, and they had some unfortunate crushing situations when we were teens where we all learned that wasn't true together. When I was ten my dad told me that my dog had gone to live on a farm which took an old dog so they could be happy and run around together all day having fun. I was well into adulthood before I actually bothered to think it through again and realise. For Filipinos, you might relate on this. If parents, friends or relatives give us money, our parents will take it and tell us. Okay, I'll keep it first and put it in your piggy bank. And voila, the magic continues cause it disappears for the lols. E afraid to ask and then when I did have a question about something they would look at me and be like seriously I don't understand what is so hard to understand about said situation being asked about. That your tongue turns black temporarily if you tell a lie. I'm one of the siblings pretty smart to line us up. Ask which of us did the bad thing and then tell us to stick out our tongues. Ops whoever doesn't want it is the mischief maker. Grandma, Dad told me the plastic fish I played with in the pool couldn't breath out of water and was suffocating in luggage compartment. Sucked for him because I cried the rest of the flight hey ha ha ha. Pop said he beat a world-class car racer in a race but because. For traction he placed a bag of sand where the back seat goes. He was disqualified. Pops also said if you dismantle the whole sugar factory he could put it back together. That we were an upper middle class family. They knew how to handle their combined income which was enough to have a leg up compared to the others in our mostly lower class neighbourhood. We were upper lower class. Lower middle at best. I was told drinking and driving is illegal. As in, 
Drinking your Pepsi while driving is illegal. I also asked about that ringing noise that you can hear when it's silent and was told that's the sound of no cars on the highway. My piece of work mother told me these things. Eating mango will make you grow hair on your tongue. Dis sacks of things sitting on road work signs. Holding them down. Filled with roadkill guts. Eating pure sugar will give you vorms. If you swallowed gum it stayed in your stomach for seven years. If you don't wait an hour after eating and go swimming you will get cramps and drown. If you tear the tags off of pillowcases the cops will come and take you to jail. My dad constantly told me that eating the crust of your sandwich would put hair on your chest. I have since extended this fast to my son. Because the crust of a sandwich is just as good as the sandwich itself fight me. That I would go to jail if I tore the tag off a pillow the one that says prohibited by federal law. These days the tags specify except by consumer. That they didn't back when I was a kid or even a youngish adult. Not me. That when my little cousins were young their parents told them it was illegal to drink soda if you were under 13 and it wasn't your birthday. They picked their age because that's how old my brother and I were. That if you hugged a girl, they could go to the police on a whim and destroy your reputation. Scared me away from making physical contact with love interests especially. And that love was reciprocated for years. The end of the world will come within one to years maximum. There is no point in making any friends at school, because they are all going to be destroyed in Armageddon any day now. My dad was a Jehovah's Witness. When little cousins who were having a big pout, bottom lips stuck out and everything, even friends' kids behaving that way, that a bird would come and poop on their lip for the poopy attitude they were having.